In this short video, we are going to go through the basics of primer design for a, a PCR method. This is known as gene splicing by overlap extension. There are two main steps involved in the gene splicing by overlap extension method. In the first, specific fragments to be joined are isolated by PCR. The ends of the amplified fragments are modified so that the two fragments overlap. In the second step, the fragments are joined using PCR. The following is an example of PCR primer design for the gene splicing by overlap extension method. In this example, we will design primers for gene knockout through insertion of an antibiotic resistance gene. Here is the DNA sequence for the genomic region under investigation. There are three coding sequences predicted. To help distinguish them, these have been highlighted in different colors. We want to knock out the gene highlighted in yellow. It is worth noting, this gene has a ribosomal binding sequence and promoter. We will try and keep these. Looking at the DNA sequence again, the two flanking coding sequences can be seen with the gene of interest removed. The highlighted sequence in red illustrates the gene we want to insert within this region. For this example, the sequence is a canamycin resistance gene. We will also design our primers to keep a promoter sequence for the CAN gene. The promoter will be from our genomic sequence as highlighted earlier. We will now go through the design of primers for our gene knockout and insertion of the gene CAN. To do this we need to design three primer pairs. One pair will be for our canamycin gene. The other two pairs of primers will be for regions known as homologous arms. The homologous arms have overlapping sequences. These overlapping regions allow for recombination of PCR amplified fragments later in the process. Here is a basic list of factors to consider when designing primers. Primers should be specific to the genomic region being amplified. Their sequences should be between 18 and 24 bases in length. Primers should have a GC content of between 40 and 60 percent. Their sequences should have one or two G or C bases at their ends. This is known as the GC clamp. Primers should be designed with melting temperatures of between 50 and 60 degrees centigrade. The melting temperatures of the pairs should be within around 5 degrees of each other. Additionally, primer pairs should not have complementary regions as these could form dimers. In regard to the primer pairs, one of these should anneal to the plus strand, the other should complement the minus strand. This is also known as the antisense or template strand. Looking again at our genomic sequence, this is now shown with the canamycin gene, inserted and highlighted in red. The potential primer binding site for homology ARM1 forward primer is shown. Along with the primer binding site for homology ARM1 reverse. This is shown with the overhanging sequence for the canamycin gene. The canamycin forward primer is highlighted in yellow, along with the overhanging sequence for homology ARM1 reverse. The canamycin reverse primer is now highlighted. This has an overhanging sequence homologous to homology ARM2. The homology ARM2 forward primer has an overhang matching the canamycin reverse sequence. Finally, the homology ARM2 reverse primer site can be seen highlighted. The image represents what the primers should amplify along with their overhanging sequences. Here you can see the canamycin reverse primer sequence. Along with the overhang, identical to the homology ARM2 sequence. Designing primers using online programs, there are numerous tools to choose from. These can help find suitable primer sequences within a specific genomic region. These can also check for any nonspecific binding sites in the genome overall.
NCBI Primer Blast is a well-known primer design software, there is a link to the site shown. In the website, primers can be predicted for user-submitted sequences. There are other sites available to check your primer stats. One example is shown here. This site will check primer suitability in terms of length, percent GC and self annaling properties, just to name a few. Returning back to the primers discussed earlier, here is how the final sequences would look. The homology arm one forward primer sequence. The homology arm one reverse primer sequence with canamycin overhang. For reverse primers, the reverse complement sequence needs to be taken. The primer sequence to be used for PCR is shown with RC in brackets. Here are the forward and reverse primer sequences for the canamycin gene. Both the forward and reverse primers have overhanging sequences for joining with the homology arms. Finally, here are the forward and reverse primer sequence for homology arm 2. Only the forward primer has an overhang for joining with the canamycin gene. With luck, these three primer pairs will first yield three PCR products, which will be subject to further rounds of PCR, to give a final, single sequence which can be integrated back into our genome under investigation. I hope this short video on primer design for gene splicing by overlap extension has helped. Good luck designing your own primers.